Friends, I'm in Monticello, Arkansas, and I see a dinosaur over here, and that is the Western Sizzler. There is one that is still working. You can see they're still actually in business. I used to love to go to places like that, but my wife didn't care for it at all. And that's probably why they went out of business. Thanks, Lord. So friends, I'm driving between Monticello, uh, Arkansas, and um, and I knew I'd heard the name Monticello, Arkansas before, and heck, I can't even think of where I'm headed to. Dermot is where I'm headed to. I do business with Drew Foam in Portland, Tennessee, which is really close to me, and this is Drew Foam Monticello. I happened to glance out of the corner of my eye, I saw a sign on the end of the building that said Drew Foam, and it says concrete, concrete and structures and stuff now, so it is no longer Drew Foam. But this is where I got my foam from for a long time, I had oversized foam sometimes that they would have to cut for me and it would come out of this plant right here. But on the end of the building down here, it's it's still actually, most of it is still on the building. And it says, a Drew foam. <clears throat> and I am in the Boon Boons. 21 more miles to Dermot, which has some, uh, and McGee is the other one, which has some pretty good Elvis history. But you can see it says Drew Foam. I'm going to zoom in real quick. I actually had to turn around because it went by real fast. And I thought that, that looks like that said Drew Foam. And that's not Ashley Drew, by the way. But you see it says Drew Foam right there. So here we are out in the Boon Boons. Something that I've actually done business with. Somebody. Monticello Industrial Park. And they have Burpsy Cola in there too. So now we're headed to Dermot and McGee. Me and my Bobby McGee. It says we're in Enon, Arkansas now. E N O N. It's been eons since I've been to Enon. So, friends, I thought you would enjoy this. We're in Dermot. We're going to go in and check out some stuff. But they're painting the water tower, and look how they're doing it. They cover it up with that, so when they're painting it and sandblasting and stuff, it doesn't mess with vehicles around and cars. Because I've heard of people getting paint jobs because the water tower was painted, and all it did was just put a few droplets of rain or water or paint on their car, and they'd want the entire car painted, which, by the way, you don't want. The original factory paint is not nearly as good, or it's not, uh, the aftermarket paint's not nearly as good as original factory paint. But I just thought that was interesting looking. Look at all those cables. There's all kinds of cables hanging down, holding that. Interesting, interesting. So friends, we're in Dermot, Arkansas, population 2889. Elvis played here at the high school gymnasium. Let's go see if it's still there. Stay tuned. So friends, we're in Dermot, Arkansas, and I am looking for the site of where the high school was. It is no longer, sadly, it has been torn down, but it was on School Street. So we're on our way over to School Street to see if we can find it. And you can see that the this town, I'm gonna circle through downtown, is like so many of these towns, man, they were booming at one time, and then things happen, and. The infrastructure just falls apart, more or less. This little town, of course, it's probably still a nice town and a lot of people love living here, but it's a lot like a lot of other places that you go, and Memphis being one of them, where there's just abandoned buildings everywhere. So this is kind of the downtown area. And I would think that the, there's the police department back there. I would think that the original school would have been close to this little area right here. So we're looking for School Street. That's a theater right there. Let's, let's look at that. So that doesn't even look like a movie theater. That is old, old school. 
American Legion, Historical Museum. I'm going to see if there's a phone number here at this museum so I can ask some questions. Stay tuned. So there was a phone number on the front of the museum. I called the man and he said, I am actually right back here. So I'm headed back here to see him. I think that is him right there. And he's gonna tell us where some of the things that we're looking for are. Stay tuned. So tell us your name, sir. Frank Henry. Frank Henry, and I got your name off the front of the museum, which is right over there on, yeah. on the, is that Main Street? That's Iowa Street. Iowa Street. Just and like the state of Iowa. Iowa Street, okay. And I came over, and you were telling us exactly where the high school was, so we know where Elvis played here. Yeah. And you know that Elvis played here. You actually have a stand-up in your museum. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, of course, I knew when he was here, he was not that famous at that time. But uh, anyway, he was there, and he, he, his maneuvering and all was such that the superintendent cut his shoulder show short and got him out of there <laughs> and he went out that time we had a truck stop out here uh halfway between here and mcgee and he went out there and had coffee or visited with a few people from there and from there he went on to mcgee and that's my about my story yes sir now there was another thing that happened um if that happened i think the show was on a friday night from my recollection and um, on Monday morning, and I may be wrong, it may have been a Saturday night, but the kids played, he did, in fact, I know it was a Friday, he did two shows, yeah. did Friday during school hours, and then did a Friday night thing. So, do you remember what happened Monday? No, I Okay, not. all right, so I will tell, uh, friends, I'll tell you what happened, and I'll, and I'll get in the screen here for just a second. Monday... The uh, superintendent was so embarrassed by Elvis dancing and all the things that he did, he gave all the kids their money back. Oh, is that right? <laughs> I didn't remember that. Isn't that something? Yeah. <laughs> and that happened right here. So he told us that the high school where it was was over there. So we're going to go over there and take a look. Stay tuned. How long have you been in Dermot? Uh, about 75 years. <laughs> a little while. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Uh, I'm doing something right now. You can come over to my house in about 15 minutes if that's okay. Uh, what I, uh, the belt is off of my lawnmower for one thing. And then I was going to change the blade. Yes, sir. I'm just barely 95 years old. Only 95, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see what I can turn up here. i tell you what, I hope I can even get around when I'm 95. But i tell you what does it. A man that gets out and works, that's what does it. You keep working, I do you so. keep living. I can tell you do, and that's important. Where are you from? I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee? Yes, sir. Over there, well... I live in Hendersonville, the home of Johnny Cash. Oh, okay. And Roy Orbison. Which I'm sure those guys came through here, too. Now look, don't go through a whole lot of trouble. Won't be able to find what I want to show you, but I'll get your name and address okay. and send it to you. And I'm familiar with a lot of the of the history here. That's the high school building right there. That's what the building looked like. Let me get yeah. that right there. That slipped out. So that is what the actual high school looked like back in the day. And you said the clinic is there now. Yes. Now, the gymnasium side of it, would it have been exactly where the clinic, or would oh, it have been to well, the right? It probably would have been just a little bit south. Okay. But not much. Okay, but real, real close to that. Yeah. Okay. And the clinic 
and then the administrative offices of the clinic is just south of there, and that's about where the uh, uh, gymnasium is. Okay, so somewhere right in that area. Yeah. Let okay. me see that again. Yes, sir. It was on, I don't guess that's it, but the a gym was on this side of the On building. the right side, right. Right there. Yeah. Okay. And I saw the new school, but it's on the other side of town. Yeah. And the truck stop that he stopped at, that that famous photo was at where he's sitting with the trooper, do you know about where that's at? Well, it's out there where uh, you'll probably see a half a dozen cars or something right past the, uh, well, is it, there is a... Uh, Scrapyard on this side. Of okay, the so it's across the street from the scrapyard. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, that gives me something to look that for. That building that's there is on this site. There's a building there. Okay, but it's not that building. No. It's not original. But there's a new building on the site. Yeah. And then also the radio station. That building is still out there, right? Yeah. Okay. It's I'll see it on the way. It was. Um, it was. Here's Elvis right there. That is amazing that you were able to find that. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, there he goes right there. And look, Elvis Presley show March 25th, 7.30 p.m., 50 cent for the children. You see that? And it says here, um, and that's the story. He said, Elvis came to Dermot, Arkansas when I was in the eighth grade. It cost an unbelievable 50 cent to see him. Usual price was a quarter. One performance Friday afternoon and one Friday night. Monday, when everybody came back to school, they got their money back because the superintendent had talked with the SSA and told them he wa that wasn't the kind of entertainment his students were supposed to see. So Elvis got paid, <laughs> but they gave all the kids their money back for seeing Elvis. So this may be one of the only towns in the world where people paid to see Elvis, saw him, and got their money back. Incredible, incredible history. Let me see if I got anything else. There he is right there out at the uh, truck shop. Yes, that is the famous photo. So we're going to go find where that happened at. Look, he's holding the trooper's gun. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the trooper got in trouble for that. <laughs> that is something else. Look, I thank you so much for that. That is very, very, very cool. And it's amazing you were able to find it that easy. You said you'd find it. That's one of the young ladies that was uh, that invited him, but he went to the Lally's house, which is got it's a doctor's house in a dentist. Yeah, is Doctor. he a dentist? Okay, yeah, and his father, I imagine it was his father's house, right? Because he's not well, he's sixty five or something. Okay, this, this but house. if I can find him, he'll be able to tell me where they lived at that yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna see if I can find him up there. He a nice guy? Oh yeah. Okay. Hey, Elvis is good yeah. care of him. Yeah. There he is. Very cool. Amazing. Thank you so much for finding that for us. So I'm going to go dig into the rest of it. Okay. You got a card in it? Yes, sir. In my truck, I do. All right. There's Elvis again. Yep. Hi, Sturman Yeah, Yep. Look at that right there. Sponsored by the senior class. And it's saying 50 cent for children, 75 cent for adults. That's <laughs> something, ain't it? <laughs> Amazing. Crawfish town. capital of the world. Yeah. Okay. The town was a um, uh, pretty pretty lively town 50, 60 years ago. Uh, McDermott had a Dr. McDermott here. He got a patent on an airplane. It don't look like an airplane, but he got a patent on what he called a flying machine uh, before... Uh, the White Brothers. Really? You want to go see it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying, is the airplane here? Well, yeah. What? In the museum. Yeah, I would love to see that. Yeah, here. About the cotton picking That's stuff? That's supposed to be represent, you know, the past history of yeah. the area. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go drive to the uh, museum. I'll see you over there. Your card and... Oh, we'll have a telephone number. Yes, sir. I'll put a number on it. Absolutely. And uh, an address.
Absolutely. So friends, you can't beat that. A 95 year old man giving us local history. It is absolutely incredible. I'm glad I called that phone number. I tell you what, in Arkansas, there's really nice people. Everybody has been very cooperative and very open to telling their history and the things. And of course this man has this museum here, so he's interested in history big time and I'm tickled to, to, to know it. We're gonna go in here and see an airplane patent before the Wright brothers. Wow. That, that doesn't look like a flying machine. That's what he called it. That's, read that right That's the there. information on it? Yeah. That is incredible. The Arkansas Flying Machine, 1872, Dr. Charles McDermott. Is this town named after Dermott? Yeah. Okay, named after him. Invented and patented this improvement in apparatus for navigating the air. Dr. McDermott. A practicing physician and minister lived in Monticello, Arkansas, raising a family and becoming a, and becoming a leader in South Arkansas County. The town of Dermott was named in his honor. For over 40 years, Dr. McDermott worked on models of flying machines preceding the Wright brothers' flight by 30 years. This replica of his patented machine was researched and built by Bob Diffie, an aviation historian from Little Rock. The plane measures 16 feet in height, 13 feet in width, and 12 feet long. The original was displayed in 1874 at the Southeastern Arkansas Fair. Then at the 1875 Arkansas State Fair, when the 1876 Philadelphia Centennial Exposition invited all American inventors to, delay, to display their creations, McDermott took his flying machine where it generated much interest and curiosity. And it's saying these drawings were part of the patent, which is all this over here. So that man recreated this, the wings and all that, but he actually got a patent on the flying machine before the Wright brothers. He passed in 1884, so he never even got to see flight, real flight. No, didn't have the motor, didn't have gasoline engine. Mm -hmm. It says, it is more mortifying that a stinking buzzard and a stupid goose could fly, and a man, the Lord of all the earth should be longer confined to the land and water, Dr. McDermott. And he's right. That is incredible. Look at this thing. Don't take a picture. I've had a leaky problem, and I think I have it fixed now, but uh, we're invited to clean it up. Yes, sir. Well, it looks really, really cool. And I see you have um, a fire truck in here. And you also got Elvis in here. Look at that. <clears throat> the kids in your town got their money back for seeing Elvis. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. So this is a cool little museum you got here. You got a lot of nice stuff. We're still trying to get it straightened up and worked on. That's had this roof problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you letting us in and showing us that history. That airplane is incredible. And um, I would have never known about that. So I'm glad I asked you about that. So that's... That uh, is part of our leak problem. It, it had to be a head. Right. You had, to, you had to cut it out to make it go up. Yeah. 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 That thing is crazy big. Amazing. Well, I thank you for showing us that. And... Uh, I appreciate you. And look, I hope I can get around even half as good as you when I'm 75. So, <laughs> and I appreciate you uh, coming out and showing us this. This has is, is been great. And people can come to Dermot and maybe visit the, uh, the museum at some point, yeah. hopefully, and see the incredible flying machine. And I see y'all have all these different t-shirts from the different uh, festivals. Oh, so when is that? What part of, what time? It was the third weekend in May. Okay. We didn't have it this year, 
Of course, that was sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce, and we really had big crowds then. Uh, our people that did the work got older and had to uh, more or less give it up. Now we have another group that uh, uh, don't have the crowds that we used to have. Mm -hmm. We claimed 20,000 people here at one time. Wow. Uh, That's a bunch of folks in this little town. Yeah, two days. It was Friday and Saturday. And, uh, so Where are you originally from? I'm Monticello area out in the hills out okay. there, about 10 miles out of Monticello. And, uh, so just like Dr. McDermott? Yeah. From Monticello and ended up in Dermott? Right. That's it. Thank you so much. All this right. has been This has been awesome. I'm going to give you uh, my card. Yeah, well, and got that yet. I got some photos of uh, of the radio station here. Is it still a working radio station? No, it closed about uh, two months ago. I think it's in May. Uh, they were the Kenny family started it, and then the father died, and then they... Uh, but the building is still there? Yeah. The original building? Original building. Okay. It was, um, it's right I here. It. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew I had a picture of yeah. it somewhere. Of course, it didn't, you know, it's grown up around there now, so, yeah. and so forth. Well, I'm going to go in there and take a look, and uh, I want to capture things like that before they're torn down. Yeah. Know? Hopefully, that thing won't get torn down, but wow, it's been open up until now. So, I'm going to get you that card. Thank All you right. so much for this. Okay. Yes, sir. Frank Henry, friends, is 95 years old, still driving. Still sharp. He told me that Jeep is 25 years old. And he complimented me on driving a Jeep and him driving a Jeep. He said that Jeep's got 180,000 miles on it. He said he drove through 18 inches of water recently through a creek. And he said put it four-wheel drive and it went right on through. Wow, I hope I can get around like that when I'm 95. We're going to go find where the high school was. Stay tuned. He's here, thankfully. This is awesome. You can't beat eyewitness testimony, friends. Right here. So it was the front of the building that way? No, it was this one. So the front of so the gym would have been on the right side, right? Right, or, right here on this end. Of okay. The but okay. The front was front face food street over. Oh, I see what you're saying. So the front of the building, so the building was that way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this end would have been the gym. Right. Okay. Yeah. It it wasn't quite it was probably near where the uh, that second building is over there because there was some apartment buildings right here. Okay. Some of the schools. So it was a little further up then. Yeah. About where that uh uh, it's probably about right between the two buildings. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is the clinic. This is Dermot Mainline Medical and Dental Clinic. And the name of this street is Speedway. I remember him saying that. So you see it says Speedway. And he said the other street, which I can't read, I think may have been School Street. Let me get my glasses on. I still can't read it, but I believe it's School Street. So the front of the school would have been this way and it would have gone like that. So we're going to get the photos out again and look. So there is the school. The gym would have been on this end. He said really out of the frame. But to give you some perspective. 
So this is School Street right here, and you can see it goes down to the end of the block and kind of turns. I'm going to zoom so you can see it. Makes a turn to the left. So the school would have been from down there where all these houses are all the way up to here. So I'll show you a picture of the school. So if you just imagine that was right here. If you were standing here looking at it, it would have looked like that, but it was back off the road. So you could see there was a pretty good sized front yard. So the physical building would have probably been actually behind those houses. He said that there was a, an administrative building here so the gymnasium would have probably been about where the gap between these two buildings is, to give you an example. So he said that would be out of frame to your right. So this would be the end of the building, and then there was a gymnasium to the right of my thumb, which would have been right about there, and that's where they played. There is nothing better than finding a 95-year-old man that lived here for the last 75 years because he knows where everything was. So we are gonna stand in the middle of the gym and I'll set GPS coordinates to go on the app. So if you wanna come here, you can. And I encourage you to come here and meet Frank. He was awesome. So we're in where he said the middle of the gymnasium would have been right about here. So there you go. So from here, we're going to take off. I'm going to walk through and walk down this back street because they would have probably loaded in on this street. And we're going to head to McGee, which is the next town. And there's a couple of things that we're going to see before we get to McGee. It'll be in my Bobby McGee. <laughs> Look, there's uh, like tons of traffic on this street now suddenly. So this would have been the back of the school area. So on this street right here is where they would have most likely loaded in somewhere in this area. And he said the gymnasium would have been right about here. So it could have been a little further or wider. You know the size of a gymnasium. It would take up some space here. But it was right here. Right in the middle of part of that clinic and part of that building right there. You saw it here first, friends. Can't get this stuff anywhere but here. Smell wood burning. Somebody's burning a pile, I reckon. Leaves or something. So you see that says South School and Speedway. So I'm gonna turn. My windshield, boy, is rough. Got some big bugs in Arkansas. But it was right on this very spot right here. So that school would have been within this block. I didn't realize I was zooming in the camera. It looked like this was a curve, but it's not. It's actually a block. Glad I rode down here. We're gonna drive around the block. That was probably a part of the original stuff, but it was across the street. And then this is the back side. Actually, there's a gymnasium there. Huh. What time period that is. Yeah, there's that smoke. Somebody's burning something over there. I'm going to circle back around to this building. There was a build date on the front of it. But you got to consider if it was built in the 70s, it's still 50 years old. Yeah, they're back there burning leaves. 
I knew I smelled wood burning. Let's see if we can see a time frame on this right here. This is erected in 51. Hmm. Oh, this is elementary school. That's the that's the kicker. So the elementary school was here, the high school was right there. So this is the back side of the school right here. And the gymnasium would have been right about there. Just another little piece of that Elvis puzzle. Yes, indeed. Gotta love little towns, friends. Fresh watermelon ready to roll. Or there's nothing like some good cold watermelon. So make sure when you're watching the Weekly Spa Guy, you subscribe, you give me a big thumbs up if you like the video, and watch the Weekly Spa Guy. Friends, thank you.